I'm not sure this is going to help anyone, but I thought I'd do another fantasy fishing video for the Bassmaster Elite on Lake Murray. Now, let me tell you ahead of time. I look at it statistically on where people finish and how they fish, finished in the past and stuff. I kind of evaluate where the people are in the groups. And honestly, group A and B, especially B, was the hardest ones to look at because there's so many good anglers in those categories. But Lake Murray should be a great fishery for the Bassmaster Elites. Forward facing sonar probably will play a little bit, not as much as the first couple tournaments for the Elites, but it will put, come into play. But what we're gonna see is there will be a shad spawn and this will be spawn fishing mostly. So bass are gonna be on the edges underneath lily pads, up close where some of the old school, and I mean that in the nicest way possible, are going to do really well. But it doesn't mean the rookies that are using that technology can't bust them down and catch them also. And the elites have been there three times. They were there in 2008, in 2011, and then last year in 2023. There's a lot of new faces and a lot of amazing anglers that are on the elites that just maybe have never heard of them, but they're just amazing anglers. Well, in 2023, they went in the end of April. Now they're fishing the first week of May. There's gonna be a little bit of a difference, but the fishing should be pretty close to the same way they did last year. And last year, they had Drew Benton and Hunter Shryrock and Kyoto Fujita, Patrick Walters, John Cox, Brandon Cobb, Drew Cook, Bernie Schultz, Jason Williamson, and Kenta Kamura and Mike Iaconelli in that top 11. And that's something we need to look at and then judge who we should pick in those, those categories. Now, right off the bat, Jason Williamson is a local. He is going to get a little bit more love because this is one of his home ponds. And that alone helps him in this tournament. But like I said, there should be a lot of sight fishing going on with the pros. A lot of anglers skipping docks, finding ledges, doing that kind of stuff. It should be fun fishing and it should be just a really great tournament for these anglers. And my boy John Cox on day one through day three added weight every day. And there's something to be said for that because that means the fish that he's going after are either repopulating or he has many areas that are holding fish. But in 2011, I had to go through this really tough. You had Mike Iaconelli who finished in third, Rick Clun who finished in 10th. You had John Cruz finished in 16th, Brandon Pelinick finished in 22nd, Greg Hackney in 14th. 43rd and Keith Combs in 44th. Now group A is the second hardest for me. Here's why. Hunter Shryrock is just an amazing shallow water angler. He's coming off of Palaka where he had a good finish. He's just fin fishing really well. He can fish forward facing sonar but he also can fish the sticks and the docks and flip and punch and do all that stuff. So Hunter's one of those guys that is on that cusp of being of winning his first tournament. In that group also is Jordan Lee, where another guy can use the technology or not use the technology. Just got out again, Placa, and at the Harris chain and did well. Jordan is arguably the best angler in this field right now, and that's not taking away anything from anyone. Jordan is just fishing great. Him coming back to the leads has been an unbelievable success, and I think he's probably the favorite to win Angler of the Year. Next, you have the Johnston brothers, who also, Palaka, they were unbelievable. Corey won. These are guys that can sight fish really well. They also can use their technology really well, too. They did well at the TAA tournament with no technology, and they've just been on fire. So, Johnston brothers are in con are in that, that sentence of a possible person you should pick. And then, remember, you have Ben Milliken and a bunch of rookies that are in this class, this group. Group A is really is tough. And Ben and Tyler and all those guys that are in this group that are forward-facing sonar, technology-based anglers, are going to do well. But are they going to be able to, can they get on the shore and find them? That's the question. That's really the biggest question. Are Can you catch them with it or without it? And the first few guys are the guys that can fish either in all ways. When I look at Group A, I think hands down, you have to take Jordan Lee in this group because I just think he's fishing in incredibly well, but I don't think taking the one of the Johnson brothers is out of the question, or even either taking Hunter. I think there's something to be said about taking one of those old school or guys who are can do both things, non-technology and technology in this tournament. So my pick for group A is Jordan Lee. In group B, which was arguably the hardest group for me to pick because you have Drew Benton in there and he won in 2023, and can he do it back to back? I mean, the odds are against him doing it back to back two years in a row. 
So, but Drew should be, Drew's in that, again, in that sentence, in that category. Also, Jason Christie is just, I mean, what do you say about Jason Christie? He just finished Palaka on fire, fishing shallow, doing really good. John Cox is in this group. Last time John Cox was there, he finished in the top, he was the top five angler. John is one of those guys that, that's his, that's his bread and butter, butter is fishing shallow, sight fishing. I like John Cox here, but also you have Coyota Fujita in this one. You have Greg Hackney. And you have Patrick Walters in this group, who's probably the heavy favorite for this group. And Patrick can do it all too. If it's offshore, Patrick can do it. If it's near shore and shallow fishing, he can do that too. My guess, and this is just me, I just think John Cox, I think it favors him. I think he has a lot of momentum building into this tournament. It fishes the exact way he wants to fish. He wants to fish shallow. He wants to fish a spinnerbait or a worm or any of that stuff. He wants to see that shad spawn, that blue, that blue black herring spawn that are going to be shallow. And John can do, will do, really good in this tournament. So in group B, my pick is John Cox. In group C, it finally gets a little bit easier. You, the favorites have got to be Brandon Palinick, Drew Cook, and Gussie. Palinick can do anything anywhere. So, so can Gussie. Two of the best anglers out there. I'm taking Drew Cook in this in this category. Drew Cook finished seventh last year. Got better and better as the, the tournament went on. He is great at sight fishing, shallow water fishing, and I think this is just leading on to him continuing being very successful on the elites. So Drew Cook is my pick for Group C. Group D, you have Brandon Cobb, who finished sixth last year. You have Brian New in this category, and Jason Williamson, who is the local guy, who finished ninth. Brandon Cobb are going to be the favorites. In this instance, I'm taking Jason Williamson. I like the thought of him being a local angler, and this being one of the places he fishes a lot. I like that. This is his place to shine. So for me, in Group D, it's Jason Williamson. And in Group E, I think there's two guys you got to look for. Mike Iaconelli and Bernie Schultz. Bernie is an absolute fantastic person and angler. You know, you have to take out the sentimental and that he's, he might be a little bit friendlier to one than the other. Bernie Schultz is an amazing angler. But Mike Iaconelli finished third back in 2011 on Lake Murray and with all of the anglers, with the KBDs and all those guys. And then he finished 11th last year. And it doesn't make a lot of sense why Iconelli's in Group E other than he's just having a bad year. This is where I think Iconelli turns it around, or I really hope that he turns it around. Mike is good for the sport, and I want to see him make the classic, to be honest. So in Group E, I like Iconelli. So who are the picks you're going to take for Lake Murray Bassmaster Elites? Comment below and tell me who those five anglers you took. Tell me if you want to see more of these videos, because I'll continue to do them if you like them, but I really do appreciate you hitting that like and subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. It really does help the channel. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers.